Welcome to a segment of Mind You and Food. This is Suzanne Toro, and this segment is brought to you by Be Simply. Let's dive in. So welcome. This is Suzanne Toro. I want to thank you for listening in to Mind You and Food. And today we're going to dive into the spectrum of light, the rainbow. And on these segments, we're really connecting to many things, uh, including food, uh, physical food, but all the things that you take in on a daily basis. And in Ayurvedic principles, eating principles, it is a simple way to follow life is to consume the rainbow on a daily basis. Yet as we go through some of the recipes coming up, you'll see that there's a couple colors that aren't in abundance in nature and that's there's a reason for that. At the same time, you have the opportunity to engage also with the food colors per the seasons too. As you'll notice in the fall, there's more of the oranges and reds uh, in our food. Uh, in the summer, it's really easy to get the full colors of the rainbows so and what there's more sunlight at that time of year so we can follow the clues of nature and as of late there's been some conversations about uh the spectrum of light and in yogic and other teachings uh it's called there's a chakra system which is literally the spectrum of light that runs through all things. And when we're in harmony with the full spectrum of light, of light and life, uh, we flow easier. And so that's why uh, the eating principle is there too. It's almost as if you were eating the rainbow to get all the nutrients that you need. Because honestly, everything exists in, in nature that we need in different proportions. And that's why we can take some clue as to what there's more colors of and how certain colors flow in and out of each season. So today, as we dive in to the rainbow, I just want to welcome you just to think about what is the color of your uh, daily menu that you consume, both physically in the form of food and in addition to the things that you fill your mind, body, heart, and soul with. Uh, What's the quality? What's the value of them? Do they nourish you? Do they feed you? Do they build you up? And ideally, this is the thing that we want to do on a daily basis. So if you think about that, that will give you a a better understanding of like, wow, I only eat uh, brown foods, or I only eat foods that are in a package, or I only do X, Y, and Z, and I don't even pay attention to what I'm feeding myself. As soon as you start to have the conversation, you can open it up and it can be a fun like treasure trove of ways to get different things. And if you think back to being a kid, kids are more interested in colors in a certain way. And even if you take them to, you know, an old school ice cream parlor, a lot of times they'll go for certain flavors based on the coloration. Uh, um, for whatever reason, pump, pump, popping into my head is the bubblegum ice cream. Uh, I'm pretty sure they still have that somewhere. But again, it has all these colors uh, that attract a child. Now, it's interesting that sometimes they don't like the green. <laughs> they want all the, the fun colors. So uh, just like the seasons that we experience here on planet earth in addition you might have seasons with your taste buds the more that you engage in different foods and seasonal eating you'll notice that you'll start to feel like oh it's time to eat this it's time to eat that and you can also when something that you really love passes its season meaning like let's say strawberries are out of season you're okay with it you're like wow i can't wait till it comes around next year and strawberries are one of those funny things because they are available now year round and even tomatoes and of course those can grow in certain regions maybe year round however it wasn't the intention for us to eat those year round so to honor when they're here uh, and to uh, connect with them so as we go through the colors as i mentioned you'll notice that some are more abundant and that color blue is not as available. However, we're what 
primarily water. So we're going to also talk a little bit about hydration. And so not as much blue foods are needed because we can get that through the water we drink and the quality of water we drink. So first and foremost, if you're inspired, I want you to think about taking a moment to evaluate the food you have in your life and what's available to you. And then you can start having some fun with it. Just like I said, like look in the market and see what's available. Today, what stuck out to me is a quick, a couple quick and easy ways, especially in summer. Like I said, all colors are typically available in summertime is that you can make salads. Uh, what I was thinking of when I started to prepare for this segment was either a spring roll wrap or a cucumber wrap or a veggie sushi roll. Those are all ways to start putting all those colors together. And if you don't want uh, noodles or rice, you don't have to have that. But basically you can take um, your cucumber, skit, take the skin off and then slice it really thin and lay it all out overlapping, almost like if you were making lasagna, a layer of lasagna. And you'll do those, uh, the long strips facing towards you. And then you'll have this nice roll that you'll be about to make. And you can put a little parchment paper underneath uh, to help you with the process. Or you could put a piece of sushi, or sushi, a seaweed underneath and put the cucumber like that. And that'll help hold it together, especially if you don't want to have rice or rice noodles, or you can take a thin rice paper making a fresh spring roll. And these are so refreshing in the summer, easy to pack, easy, pretty easy to make. It just takes a few rounds to figure out how to be in motion. And like most foods that come from the Asian Pacific, it's a lot of prep, a lot of cutting, and then it goes really fast once you're all ready. So for this, roll I imagine in this moment you take your cucumbers you lay them out I would lay them out uh, on seaweed that's what I'm going to do today in my mind's eye then you're going to have sliced up carrots meaning uh, almost like a grated carrot you can even pre-buy those that way you're going to take purple cabbage uh, carrots are for your orange purple cabbage you're going to slice that up really nicely uh, and have that ready. And then you're going to take some red and yellow peppers and you're going to slice those up nice and thin. Now for the blue, you could do some uh, blue edible flowers. You could do blue corn. If you have that at your local markets this time of year, usually this is corn season as we go into August or a blue potato is another fun way to go. You could do a Japanese sweet potato uh, but it's going to be more purple than blue, but there are blue potatoes. The blue, the potatoes and the corn, rather than eat those raw, you could lightly steam those, uh, just shred them up. Uh, corn you can remove or you could roast the corn and uh, cut it from the cob. And the blue potatoes, you could bake those or you could steam those and then slice them up just in little things nice thin strips so that you can lay it in there because you're just going to combine all these yummy veggies and put them together and then last for some red you could do your peppers the three well we had red yellow you can also add in there um, some tomatoes which are available this time of year too uh, and then you'll get some cilantro and rice noodles if you like and or avocado so as you're going to take this uh, you're going to just layer everything up how you wish. Uh, be cautious not to put too much in there like a burrito. You, this kind of has an influence, Asian, uh, Mexican influence with the ingredients. And you're going to just roll it up. And then once you have it rolled up, you're going to get a nice serrated knife or sharp knife. And you can either cut it into smaller pieces like a sushi or you could cut it into handheld roll depending on how long you went. So if you made it a foot long, you could do two six inch pieces. Super yummy. And then from there, you can take uh, rice vinegar, some um, hot water, some coconut sugar or honey, take fish sauce, or you can do a vegan substitute uh, like amino, like coconut, uh, amino, amino acids, amino 
I'm saying it wrong. Uh, but you could do, there There are there at the store if you're not wanting fish sauce. And then a chili paste. Or you can buy sweet chili dipping sauce. And then also you can make a peanut sauce if you wish to. Or you can just use like a soy sauce. So you roll that all up and then you dip it in the sauce of your choice. And you have a nice, quick, easy to go. You can also, if you want it to have more of a salady taste, you could puree your cucumber or your avocado and you had salt pepper lemon and make it almost like a kind of a creamy caesar caesar add some cilantro and a little bit of garlic in there super yummy to dip those in too so you have all of a sudden this fresh yummy salad on the go with all your colors in there as a handy snack for the summer. And so the reason in the summer we have all the colors available to us is because the sun is out full spectrum. And what happens when the rain clouds come in? If you're in a part of the world where the clouds come in like Hawaii or in Arizona when the monsoons come in, uh, then all of a sudden there's a rainbow. So it shows you that spectrum of light that runs through everything at all times. So the chakra system is merely reflecting what the spectrum of light is reflecting. And each, it's interesting how nature works because each food group uh, works with a different aspect of ourself and helps heal ourselves. So really powerful, fun, easy way to maintain your health is just by working through what's available seasonally and uh, what you know, you would like to dive into. You'll notice at times, uh, like the chakra system, you will be depleted or blocked in that area, meaning that maybe you have, uh, you're really attracted to orange. And so that orange color represents your your uh, fertility center, your hips, your creative center. In addition, it ref- reflects um the foods that are available. And so those foods can actually bring you into harmony with that region, like pumpkin, sweet potatoes, those things, guess what? They're really helpful to your organs in this part of the body, bladder, sex organs, hips, uh, sacred waters, lower digestion, colon, all those things help heal. And it's also connected to your eyes. So we can have fun with the colors without uh, having to think too much and just move intuitively. So the other thing that came up that I wanted to do a shout out is there are more and more bread stores popping up, very European. And they're going the old school route of sourdough starter, all organic and in the local area here, I'm going to shout out the ones I know, but they exist in almost every town now here in Southern and Northern California. In addition, that's something that took charge why uh, everyone was retreating during this past brouhaha here on planet Earth. So uh, I'm going to put the links below, but there's this beautiful couple, Gusto Bread. They have pastries. They have fresh bread. Um, I've interviewed them. In addition, uh, they have a lot of influence from Mexico. So you can go there and they have herba mate. They have all these side accoutrements that you can add to bread or to your daily routine first thing in the morning. And then uh, another one that came to town is Colossus Bread. They are out of uh, San Pedro and Long Beach. Uh, This is more of a French influence bread shop super yummy pastries, cookies, uh, all these other side things that go with the bread that they create. And they have a yummy menu if you want to stop in there and have a little uh, breakfast or lunch type snack and um, some really yummy coffee and tea drinks. In addition, um, there's a new one. I haven't gone there, but I've drooled over their images is Nona Mercato. And this seems to be bread meeting high end pastries. And so I'm excited to go and check that out. And the reason I bring this up is bread's gotten a bad rap. I like seed oils and I'm not giving up on either one of them. When you have a good sourdough, it helps with your digestion and how you can eat your bread is you can eat it with good fats. So 
even with what I just described, you could turn a lot of those veggies into a tapenade and place it on top of your bread if you want more savory. Or you could place, place avocado. Everyone nowadays knows avocado toast. A good fat, good olive oil on there with balsamic, fresh tomatoes in the summer. You can even add a little bit of cheese if you like. Those things, um, olives, those things are actually can be digested quite well in your stomach. And so bread is such a beautiful food because it can sustain you. And when treated as the main thing, not like before a meal, putting it in or, you know, the cheese plate on the side before you have a meal, if you really make it a meal, meaning you have your bread and what you put on top of it and know that if you make it fat based, that it will benefit you more. So like a nut butter with some fruit or some avocado with some yummy uh, vegetables on top, or you could even do uh, all of tapenade with oil. You have that good fat in there and it'll digest nicely. Or you can just do a simple old school toast it, uh, at, to your Christmas that you like and add some good farm fresh butter. So maybe reevaluate your relationship with bread and like anything, moderation, less is more and give it the reverence that it was always intended to is to be there uh, with you uh, as the front runner when you enjoy it. In addition, as we talk, as all these shops have little tasty treats with um, sugar, aka sugar in it. And the same concept goes many places around the world. You go in and get like a piece of cake or a cookie or a pastry. And again, it's it's what you're consuming in that moment. So to allow yourself to have these things, but do it in a way that means that you don't have a whole cake or you don't have a whole dozen of cookies. You go to the shop, you buy one special cookie, you sit, have a cup of tea and enjoy it with good conversation. So as inspired, check out your local um, new bakeries popping up and see what they have there and watch the bread making. It's They're usually doing it where it's quite visible and it's really beautiful to see. And a lot of them, we'll get into pizza because a lot of them are actually offering some pizza also. So, and then what I would like to also talk about is hydration. We've talked about it a little bit each week. I posted a couple articles below on foods that are hydrating. Simple rule of thumb, watery Fruits and vegetables are hydrating, yet you'll see cabbage, you'll see uh, broccoli on the list, some things that you wouldn't imagine. They're not like a cucumber or watermelon. However, they do hydrate you. So in the wild, if you've ever observed anyone in the wild, you will notice, uh, meaning animals, not human animals, but animals, They don't eat that much and they don't drink that much, but they're hydrated because they do eat the leaves and those things keep them hydrated. We're very similar. And this is an easy way. If you don't have access to clean water, you can uh, really think about the food you buy. If you can buy clean and organic or there's ways we'll do a whole talk about that another time. There's other ways you can get clean water and clean your fruits and vegetables so that it is, uh, healthy for you so you don't um, take in any pesticides, chemicals, and so forth. So the next thing that this leads us to is composting. So a great way to reduce your waste at home is that you can make a pile out back and start throwing all your vegetables. However, uh, you might get some rodents and it takes a while. You have to turn it and, and tend to it. Uh, There's this new product on the market that is so cute. I don't know. It's just amazing. It's beautifully designed. I do not have one, but I've been observing it. Um, it's called Lomi Food Waste and Compost. And it basically takes every, all your food waste. You can put old food in, your scraps, everything in there, and it turns it into dirt. Now, the thing I love about this is it's instant. Also, if you live in the city, this is a way that you can have fresh dirt. If you do not need that dirt, guess what? You can take it down to your parks, your city areas and dump it in the soil, or you can share it with a friend that has gardening areas available to them, or you could start a little pot garden 
on a balcony or a little patio that you might have and use that soil. So this gives you a lot of capabilities and it reduces the garbage, the smell of the garbage and what's going out. So if inspired, I encourage you to check out. It's about $400 or $500, so not um, necessarily inexpensive, but I think for the long haul, it's a beautiful product. And like I said, I haven't, I don't have one yet, but I dream of it and it's just, it's really well designed. Uh, otherwise, what I do is I do have a pile in my yard where I throw the waste and you have to churn it. And like I said, it's a lot more work. So you have to decide what works best for you. Uh, so those are things to consider. So, and then as um, one other th thing, little tip I wanted to give this week is for the face, a little Ayurvedic treatment for the summer. We had the cooling bath treatment in last week's segment, if you listen to it. And so one thing that you can do uh, for your face, your skin, is that if you want to even out, especially if you've been getting extra sun this summer, is that you can create this mask. You put turmeric, baking soda that's organic without aluminum and olive oil and the juice of a lemon. So two tablespoons, two tablespoons of turmeric and baking soda, one tablespoon olive oil and the juice of a lemon. You're going to blend that all up and pour into a jar because you won't use it all at once. Um, and then so you can store it in a, a cool, dark place or you could even store it in your cupboard. But then you're just going to brush it on your face. Let it sit for 10 to 20 minutes and then after that you can jump in the shower wash it off or just wash it off at the sink and then apply any uh, face oil or that you want um, on top of that i'm gonna i have links below to a couple companies that offer beautiful handcrafted ayurvedic skincare which are great things to place on top this is just a simple old school way if you want to make it for yourself you can or there's some great products out there so this week, as inspired, I encourage you to go out and check out the rainbow, see how you can make it up into a hand salad, a salad that you put on your table and see what happens when you start investigating where the rainbow and right now we're getting grapes in too. So you might, it's pretty easy at this time of year to find that those blue tones in some of our crops and yeah, you can enjoy them. So until next time. We're going to sign out with little Kadri Squat, her new, newest single, Be Aware, and then Dante Marino Alive. He just released his new uh, album, and I will put the link below. Check it out. It's a, a fun way to engage with Summer with uh, the, this album that he just produced. So enjoy. We're going to sign out with both of them. Until next time, this is Suzanne signing out with a full heart, a soft gaze, a deep bow, and a namaste. Be simply. Once again, I want to thank you all for listening to this segment of Mind You and Food. As inspired, explore your local markets, your garden, and feed your system with that which it is requesting from you. We're going to sign out with little Kadri Scott and Dante Marino.
You can find yourself